Hi, everybody. And if you are ready, this is my 2024-2025 winter outlook. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. This is centered over the Portland, Oregon area, but it also covers the Cascades, Mount Hood, and general information for Vancouver, Washington, Salem, Oregon, and, and up and down. This is something I've been doing for 20 years and we've had some pretty good success over the years. So uh, after spending literally weeks and hours on the kitchen table at home, putting together uh, pieces of data, um, let me take you through it. So real quick, just to kind of set up what I mentioned a moment ago, we have had some pretty good success, especially the last two years on hitting some main bullet points for the winter. So a year ago, we talked about the fact in October when my outlook came out that if we got a big winter storm in the Portland area, it would be mainly ice, not snow. Well, the storm that hit in January deposited less than two inches of snow and then went all sleet and then got hit with a round of all freezing rain. So that was a good call. It was an ice storm, not a snowstorm that we had a year ago. We also talked about last year it would be a really slow start to the Mount Hood ski season. In fact, we said it could be one of those years where Christmas week comes and there's literally not a speck of snow on the ground at government camp or the front slope of Ski Bowl. We were right. If you think back, it was bare Christmas week. We also talked about the fact that December would be the warmest month of the winter season a year ago in terms of how much warmer above normal. We project, get this, we projected 4.5 degrees Fahrenheit above normal temperature for December. That was the exact number for the Portland Climate Report, 4.5 degrees. We talked about the snowpack would have a decent catch up after a slow start to 74% of normal. We actually got up to 83% of normal, but I consider that a, an acceptable forecast. And I went out of my way to tell you I didn't really have any confidence points a year ago to say it was going to be wet, normal, or dry in terms of total precip. We now know the last winter, and this is important to note, I'll come back to this, but last winter turned out to be a good water season for Portland at more than six and a half inches above normal total precipitation for the rainy season, which is what I'm talking about from November 1 through March 31. Most of the talk this year has been that a La Nina winter is coming. But notice my banner, weak La Nina or neutral flow, flow pattern expected. I'm going to talk more about that. La Ninas are characterized typically as good active winters, both good precip totals, good snow in the mountains, because the jet stream more often than not sets up and it enters the U.S. right over Oregon and Washington. So we're right in the jet stream um, entrance quadrant, if you will, of North America. And that's why we have that stereotype of La Nina's being really good. But here's the deal. Noah initially projected that we would be in a La Nina as early as this past July. Well, here we are in the 24th day of October and it hasn't developed. We're still neutral. So the modeling is still biting on the fact that we will get into La Nina, some of the modeling, not all of it. So what you're looking at here, remember, this is based on water temperatures in the equatorial belts off the coast of South America. Warmer water temperatures than normal, normal by more than a half a degree Celsius, El Nino. Colder by a half a degree or more, La Nina. Right where the seasonal averages say the water temperatures should be neutral. So here's the neutral zone. Now, obviously, we're getting into late October. This modeling, the, the bulk of the models take us down into a weak La Nina developing in November. But I want to show you one more thing. This has two different models. The green line is the old statistical model, which basically means we take real data from years past, we compare it to real data that we have right now. And that model, which is older, says that we never get into La Nina. We stay neutral. And in fact, the National Weather Service has lowered their La Nina expectation confidence to 60%, meaning they're saying, well, there's a 40% chance it never happens. Now, the dynamical model, which is newer and heavily bets on computer prognostication, if you will, does develop no later than November, a weak La Nina staying no colder than about eight degrees, excuse me, eight tenths of one degree Celsius. You need to get to a degree or better to be considered moderate. So this builds us into a weak La Nina. We'll see if that happens or not. And one thing I do in my outlook is I make a strong determination in terms of, is it going to be a weak El Nino or La Nino or a moderate one or a strong one? Because there's a big difference. 
just to throw out the term, La Nina means this is incorrect. There's a huge difference between a weak cycle and a strong cycle. So for example, if we do go into a weak La Nina, the data going back to 2000 indicates the weak La Nina is out at PDX here in Portland, site specific, between November and March, produces 18.91 inches of total precipitation. That's about five inches below normal. Now, remember I said last winter, we had a great season. So consider this, if last season was above normal by six inches, and this coming season is below by four, that's a 10 inch precipitation swing. And you would absolutely notice a big difference of this winter not being as wet as last winter. So let's hope we're not below normal. You always want a good healthy water season, but I'm throwing that out there as a possibility. Now, generally La Nina seasons, weak, moderate, strong, all of them, average out to be our best snowpack makers up in the Cascades and specifically Mount Hood at 104% average of El Nino cycles going back to the winter of 1999-2000. This is measured at the Mount Hood test site at 5,400 feet. I used to consider these El Nino, La Nina neutral cycles going back to 1950. That's how back the records go from the Weather Service in detail. But the fact of the matter is our climate's changing. So now I only go back to the winter of 1999-2000, which I've had success with, and it makes more sense if you think about it. So if you haven't seen this, this is the outlook from NOAA for the months of December, January, February, meteorological winter, putting the Northwest Oregon, Washington in a below normal temperature pattern and in green, largely an above normal precip pattern. And this is the stereotype for La Nina. Now, while we could be below normal in temperature wise, I really think odds favor us being drier than normal. And you know that doesn't mean that it's reason to freak out I, what I'm seeing is we could have weeks of there's not much activity and then bam, you get hit with a really big storm. And when it all averages out, you're below normal. Now, this is not a strong indicator, but what this shows going back to 2000, Arctic outbreaks, the real cold air masses that dropped down happened. There's been 16 of them happened since 2000. 10 of those 16 have happened in either weak La Nina or neutral seasons, which means the scale slightly tilts this winter for us getting an Arctic outbreak. Now, remember last January, which was El Nino, we had an Arctic outbreak. That's what led to that ice storm. So again, it can happen in any phase, but if you look at the averages, a weak La Nina or neutral year slightly favors that we'll have an Arctic outbreak. And Arctic outbreaks, I mean, you think, well, last winter it was all ice, but that goes both ways. There are other indicators in terms of whether it's gonna be an ice storm or a big snowstorm. So this year, when I looked at the neutral to weak La Nina phase since 2000, I found seven comparison years that had a similar cycle based on temperatures in the equatorial waters off the coast of South America. So if you're a weather buff, I'm looking at the winters and I'm computing averages out of the winters of 2000, 2001, 5, 6, 8, 9, the winter of 2012 to 2013, 13, 14, 16, 17, and the winter of 17, 18. Now, I want you to notice the variety here because this is an important note. The winter of 2000, 2001, practically no snow, and it was a drier uh, winter than normal. 2005, 6, again, practically no snow. Had good water year, though, and we had a number of east wind events, including one that produced a 69 mile per hour wind gust out in Camas. This is interesting. The December of 2008 shows up in the data set that I'm computing. That was the December where Portland got 19 inches of snow. Most of it fell before Christmas Day, but we still had 10 inches on the ground as a depth on December 25th, which stands as the record of the most snow depth on Christmas Day in the record books. So that gives you hope if you want a big snowstorm that we could have a big snow event, right? 12, 13, back to not much snow. 13, 14, a cold Arctic blast that led to mostly snow, eight inches. 16, 17, a January snowstorm. 17, 18, a February snowstorm. So if you look at all of these, you, number one, you get a huge variety. But again, the, the pendulum slightly tilting towards favoring a snowstorm event. What I really found in my data sets was that there wasn't much consistent. Wild swings from a pretty dry year to a pretty wet year. Wild swings from no snow to one or two good snowstorms. So I think, again, this is a winter that's going to offer a variety of some down quiet time maybe a down quiet month, and then bam, we get hammered with a, a series or a number of pretty significant events, either in total rainfall or the chance, which I think is a heightened chance 
of a good snowstorm or, or maybe two at some point during the winter for the valley. So here are my conclusions, again, based not entirely, but heavily on the averages of those seven years that I showed you. So for the for November through March, the rainy season for Portland, I'm looking at a total average that could be as cold as two degrees Fahrenheit below normal for the five month period to as much as only a degree above normal. So basically, I don't see the long term averages for the five months deviating too much. The data shows it could be an extreme month, cold or warm, but otherwise pretty normal. And remember in the data set, November 2016 was crazy warm, almost six degrees above normal, one of the warmest Januaries we've ever had. But January 17 was one of the coldest Januaries we've ever had. Again, here's the pendulum swinging in both directions. Eight degrees below normal with a heck of an Arctic outbreak that led to 18, 14, 8 to 14 inches of snow. One year ago, I told you I had high confidence on what the temperature patterns were going to be. I told you I didn't have much confidence in what the precip patterns were going to be in terms of totals. Well, this time it's the opposite. I don't really have a strong indicator on what the overall temperature averages are going to be. But I do feel like I have confidence that it's going to be a drier winter than normal. And, and, and let me get to that. OK, uh, here we go. Well, let me get to that for a moment. One thing I want to point out one thing about temperatures. So what I want you to get from this is if you go back and you look at the 30 year climate averages for Portland from 1971 to 2000 and then 1991 to 2020 over the months of November through March, you find the following to be true. The overall temperature trend is that low temps have increased by 1.6 degrees Fahrenheit. High temps have increased by just shy of two degrees Fahrenheit. Mean temperatures have increased by about 1.4. And my point is, and I was talking to one of my colleagues the other day, we're, we're in that period of time now where if you don't have an Arctic outbreak, you're probably going to have a 30 or 31 day monthly temperature average that's above normal. It's just getting harder and harder to average below normal with the overall trends of climate going warmer. So it really does take an Arctic outbreak overall to significantly come up with a temperature average that's colder than normal. I just want to throw that out there. Okay, let's talk precip. This is one of my high confidence points. We're going to be drier than normal. We talked about this a moment ago. So if you compute the average of those seven years, you come out with 21.55 inches of total precipitation, rain and any frozen precip like snow melted, okay? 21.55. That's 2.35 inches below what the five-month average is of 23.90. So if this is true, this alone would be more than eight inches drier than what we actually had last winter. Again, last winter was six and a half inches above normal. Data suggests one to two wet spike months were three to four fairly below normal average months in terms of precip. What I've been talking about, this fluctuation, a mix of dry, strong rainstorms mixed in. All right, you ready to talk Valley Snow? I know this is the money graphic for a lot of you. So a year ago, my big headline was, I wasn't positive we were going to get a big winter storm, but if we did, I felt confident it would be almost all ice and not snow. We now know I was correct, the January storm that was sleet and freezing rain. This year, again, the odds aren't overwhelming toward a big storm because we have the mixed data set of no snow to some years that had multiple big storms. So if you compute the averages, 60% chance favoring one or two big snowstorms of six to eight inches or more. My confident point here is, the opposite of last year, any winter storm will be mostly snow, meaning very little to zero ice. That's great news because it's easier to drive in snow than ice. Snow does less property damage than ice as well. Good news there. I don't have a strong indicator on any month. I feel like there's an even chance of a snowstorm in December, January, February. Remember, two years ago, I had confidence of if we were going to get a big storm two years ago, two winters ago, it would be the last half of February into the first days of March. We had a big storm that hit that year around February 21, 22. We were right. But there's no strong indicator this year. So look for an even chance, December, January, February, of any big storms coming in. All right. Now, I will tell you that neutral years are the ones that favor the most heavily big snowstorms in Portland, most heavily. And again, so if we don't get to La Nina and we hang out as a cool neutral year, then the pendulum swings a little bit more toward favoring a big snow event. All right. What about Mount Hood? This is a high confidence point for me as well. Last year, remember, we set a slow start. Might not be hardly any snow at 4,000 feet Christmas week. We were right. This year, I'm projecting a good, healthy snow. The range of the seven years I computed up on Mount Hood is 68 to 115% of normal snowpack, the average 92%. That's a good snow year. 
my confidence point is this, a good, healthy start to the season. In fact, in my mind, when I looked at data, somewhere around December 10th, I think we start building really healthy bases at all of the Mount Hood resorts. In fact, Christmas week, remember last year, we didn't have much. Last year, Christmas week started with Timberline with a 20-inch base, Meadows with a 16-inch base, Ski Bowl with nothing. This year, I'm projecting a 75 inches on the ground for skiers and boarders to enjoy Timberline. 63-inch base at Meadows Christmas week. And nearing 40-inch base at Ski Bowl. Plenty for them to be open for full skiing and boarding. So this is going to be interesting to see if I'm correct on that point. That's going to be a good snowpack and a good healthy start, in fact, to the snowpack season. All right. So real quick, getting back to Portland. Projecting a drier winter than last winter. What could be a big swing of maybe eight, nine, ten inches drier than last winter, and roughly two inches or so below normal. Any big storms we get in terms of winter weather will be snow, not ice. And again, not anything really headline grabbing on the temperatures within a degree or two of below or colder both ways. And remember, if we don't get into La Nina, then the pendulum increasingly favors that we will get an Arctic outbreak. So we talked about that. And with that, I conclude my winter outlook. I, I, you know, use this or save it. Go back and see how I'm doing. You know, you can online, you can kind of freeze those graphics and, and see how I'm doing. I may do that in some of my uh, projections coming up. As I say goodbye, this is our beautiful Golden Maximus who loves the snow. If you have a dog, your dog probably loves the snow too. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. That's my outlook for this winter.